I haven't focused too much on electric motorcycles on my channel, but it is a growing segment all over the world. And this brand is a little bit interesting to me. We don't have it in the United States yet, but it might be something coming to the North American market soon. This is Ultraviolet Motorcycles. They are founded in India and they've had great success there, uh, followed by a European launch uh, in the last year, and they are growing in popularity. So I'm going to talk about the several models that they have available right now, as well as a few of their newer models that they plan to release in the future. With the Ultra Violet, there are two main street bikes, both called the F77, but there's a Mach 2, which is a sportier super sport stance, and a super street, which is more of a naked, more upright riding position. Both of these have the same platform and offer 40.2 horsepower equivalent with a 231 kilometer range, 100 newton meters of torque at the rear wheel, which is crazy, but expected from a motorcycle, and a top speed of 150 kilometers per hour. Let's start by taking a look at the Mach 2. This here is the Mach 2, which is the sportier, more super sport riding position. I'm going to get on it and you'll see it has the clip-on handlebars and a more aggressive tucked forward position. So as I get on, you can see that I'm lean forward, with nice grip on the tank and handlebars forward as you would expect from a sporty riding position. There are some interesting technological features of this. It offers rear radar and front detection. And I'm gonna show you a demo of this in a few minutes, but um, it has a colorful LCD display, which shows you everything that you need to know. Uh, traction control, anti-like braking system. We've got an interesting demo here. This bike has really interesting technology that I've never seen before. It has haptic feedback in the handlebars that buzz when danger is detected. So if you look at the screen right now, the weather turned rainy and the music I'm listening to completely turned off and it's telling me that there's something on the left, which was a car. So there's a buzz in the handlebars that warns me ahead of time. Oh, I feel the buzz again. It says something is rear. It deprioritizes the music playing in my cardo and lets me know that there's a danger ahead. So completely foggy, rainy, and um, it's telling me that there's oncoming traffic coming up as well. So this is really interesting tech and they're using sensors to, to tell you what's going on. So as you can see, there's a truck in front. It gives me feedback with a buzz in the handlebars. It turns the music down in the cardo. And then once the danger has passed, I can hear the music again at the same volume that it was. And it's the same idea if you're communicating with a passenger or communicating with a fellow rider. It doesn't cut off your communications. It's integrated into their own proprietary helmet. And this haptic feedback is really something that I've never experienced before and really interesting motorcycle tech. Ultraviolet is a tech forward company and this is shown by the helmet that they designed. They partnered with Cardo to offer an integrated seamless experience. You saw in the demo I was wearing the Cardo edge phones and the alerts come straight into your helmet and automatically lower the music or any riders talking to you while you're riding. Nothing extra to buy so if you have an Ultraviolet and you buy their integrated helmet you're going to get all those rider alerts as you ride. Now the F77 Super Street which again is the same platform as the Mach 2 we just saw, but a much more comfortable riding position for everyday use. I'm going to get on this bike and show you. Comfortably, comfortably flat foot this motorcycle, so if you're in stop and go busy city traffic, you can stay planted, you don't have to worry about the bike toppling over. And then again, you're getting the same horsepower, same range, and same kind of riding experience, only in a more upright position. Knees are slightly bent, as you'd expect from a uh, naked motorcycle, and the handlebars are straightforward, very comfortable riding position, so I expect you'd be able to ride this comfortably for many, many miles. Here we have the Desert Wing, which is their dual sport touring style motorcycle. This one is already available in India and will soon be available in Europe. This is an exciting one for me to see if they make a North American launch of this motorcycle because the height looks very, very, very comfortable. It has the same platform as the two prior street bikes that we saw, so you're gonna be getting the same range, same horsepower, and same riding experience. So let me get on this bike and show you. So, as you can see, comfortably, comfortably flat-footed at my height of 5'11", six feet tall. So this would be a really nice touring, cruising motorcycle, ample space for a passenger. You can see they have a nice top case and two hard panniers attached to this bike. So this would be a very, very nice touring solution. And again, you're getting the same advanced tech that you've seen on the other motorcycles. You're gonna get the blind spot detection, the front and rear radar, and everything is controlled through this nice, colorful LCD display. This beauty 
Tree is not available for sale yet, but it looks like they might be working towards that in the future. This is their racing bike design. You can see from the carbon winglets, the Brembo brakes, the Olin suspension. This is a top spec electric motorcycle. It even has a steering damper on the handlebars and again, aggressive riding position with the clip-on handlebars. As you can see here, the power numbers are very impressive, what they're able to get out of this electric bike. You're getting 120 horsepower with 972 newton meters of torque, which is absolute insanity for such a lightweight electric motorcycle. The weight here is only 180 kilograms. So for me, I would be terrified that I would loop this bike, but I feel like they are gonna have advanced traction control and make this riding experience really, really exciting. This to me is the coolest bike that Ultra VLA it has right now. It's not available yet. It's in prototype form, but it will soon be available for production. This thing is just a gnarly looking, absolutely fun looking bike. If you're into off-road, if you're into dirt biking, this thing looks fantastic. This is called the Shockwave, and it's going to give you 14 and a half horsepower with a 165 kilometer range and an absurd 505 newton meters of torque at the rear wheel, and you're getting a top speed of 120 kilometers per hour. Hour, which is just an exciting ride. You can see here they've got knobby tires, they've got the, uh, the pegs for standing and off-road riding, non-slip, and again you're getting nice technology with the LCD screen in the front and of course a little small front fairing. If you're into scooters, they have that too. This is called the Tesseract. It's still in prototype form so I can't sit on it, but it should be available for sale and production in the next year or so. It features a radar technology and 20 horsepower of power with a great range of 261 kilometers. It's giving you 14 inch wheels for a comfortable ride. And you can see here, this is a wide, nice, comfortable seat. So for city, urban cruising, uh, commuting, it's gonna give you a, a more more comfortable ride. It also has a larger LCD display compared to the, some of the other production motorcycles I've seen, so you'll be able to see all of your information and whatever other options they have to offer once that motorcycle scooter is launched. One of the things I really like about these ultraviolet bikes is the design. A lot of e-bikes right now look very futuristic and they're trying to be something different. These bikes look like traditional motorcycles and I love that. The Super Street looks like a standard naked bike. The uh, Mach 2 looks like a quality super sport. So I think that design language that this company is using is something that will appeal to a wider audience. And this is what I really enjoy about ICMA so far, learning about new brands that might not be available in the United States yet, but I really do hope that we see these motorcycles in North America at some point.